Welcome to the third video in this series of new year, new job. Now by this stage, you should have your resume and portfolio ready. Now you're just ready to make your application and apply. So if you haven't yet prepared your resume or your portfolio, go back and watch the first two videos in this series. If you've already watched those and you're ready to apply, welcome, let's jump into it. So where do you find a design job to apply for? There's kind of two ways of doing this. Either you have certain companies in mind that maybe you've been following or maybe you're just really passionate about working at that company so you could keep an eye on their job board and apply. Or maybe you don't have an idea of a particular company that you want to work for. In that case, there are a lot of really great design job boards that I recommend checking out if you're looking for inspiration on where to apply. Some design job boards that I recommend are Dribbble. They have a really good list of jobs. Creative Guild is another place to go. This is kind of a recent one that's run by Creative Mornings. And another one that I've used in the past is Angel List. This is not specific to design, but it is tech companies. So if you're specifically looking to work in tech, I recommend Angel List to see what tech opportunities there are. So alternatively, maybe you have some companies in mind that you would really like to work for. What I recommend is doing a bit of research, creating a little list of companies that you have your eye on, and then over the next three, six months, keeping an eye on their job board and seeing what roles they're posting. They may not have any roles open for design or that meets your level right now, but they could in the future. So keep it on your radar and keep frequently checking in to see who they're hiring for. I do recommend creating this list of companies that you're interested in three months prior to when you're actually ready to apply. This way it helps give you time to prepare your application and it also helps give you some time to get to know the company better. You can look at the jobs they're posting over time and get a, get a bit of a sense or an understanding for the kind of people that they're looking to work with. That way when it comes to actually creating your application, you have this context and can tailor your application to make sure it meets the requirements of the kind of people they're looking to work with. Let's talk for a little bit about how to interpret job descriptions. You do not need to meet 100% of the criteria to apply. I'm going to repeat that because it's very, very important and a lot of people don't have this philosophy. But trust me, you do not need to meet 100% of the criteria to apply. In my opinion, if you meet at least 60%, then you meet enough criteria to apply. I've said yes to candidates in the past that only meet about 60% of the hiring criteria, but make up for the other 40% with motivation, ambition, passion, willingness to learn. This stuff is also really, really important and is not something that can be just checked off in a job description list. Now, I know that confidence can sometimes play a big factor here as well. If you're not feeling confident about it, I still recommend putting in your application. My philosophy is kind of, you already have a no, but you might have a yes. So you may as well apply, right? You can always turn it down. You can always back out later. Unless you try, you just do not know. So please don't feel like you have to meet 100% of the criteria and don't feel like you have to be 100% confident at this stage. Later on when you're interviewing, we'll talk about that later. You do need to have a lot of confidence. But for now, if you feel like you meet 60% of the criteria and it's something that you're passionate about, a company and a job you're excited about, apply. Now you should be applying for a role that is within your current level or maybe one step above. You want to set yourself up for success. So if you are a graduate designer just coming out of design school, please don't apply for senior design roles. You're, it's not going to set you up for success and you're likely going to be really disappointed. Look for those more junior or entry level design roles where you have more chance and more potential of actually getting hired. However, the one exception to this is if maybe you are ready for the next step in your career. You might be a mid-weight level designer, have been working in that role for two to three years, and feel ready to make the jump to senior. Now, of course, it's perfectly okay for you to then look for and apply for senior positions. In fact, I encourage it. This is actually a really great way to get a boost in your career. Let's talk about applying. Now, first, do your research on the company. This is going to pay off in the long term when it comes to your interview, but also now in your application. If you do research on the company, this can help you tailor and tweak your application to make sure you're showing passion, enthusiasm, and excitement for that company and what they do. I have seen some examples of designers who have tweaked their portfolio for the company. For example, I go to their portfolio and it says 
hi, Uber. And it talks a lot about their personal interest in the transportation industry. Now, this is kind of going the extra mile and you don't have to do this, but if it's something that you are excited about and you want to show a little bit of extra passion and excitement for that company, you might want to consider putting in some sort of effort like that. Now, if you can, I do recommend finding a referral. A referral is somebody who works at the company that you want to apply at and can put your application in for you on their behalf. This is often a really great way to get a foot in the door because you will probably skip the pile of random applications and it also gives your referrer the opportunity to put in a short note of recommendation on why they think you would be a great fit at the company. This is where any past networking that you may have done or connections you've made in the industry can become really, really invaluable. Now, you don't really want to just reach out to a random person at the company. So this can take some time to form a relationship with somebody there. If you don't know anybody there right now, then I recommend going on to LinkedIn, checking out the design team at the company and seeing if you can find a designer that currently works there that you are interested in striking up a professional relationship with. This can take some time, so I don't recommend immediately messaging someone out of the blue and saying, hey, can you refer me? More what I recommend here is just creating that founding relationship with them. Maybe they'll invite you in for a coffee chat or give you a tour of the company, or you might bump into them at a local design event or meetup. Having a referral is a great way for you to get to know more about the company and more about the role. So I do recommend striking up this relationship a little bit more early in advance and not leaving it too late to when you get desperate to apply. I've had several coffee chats and conversations with potential candidates who want to come in and just get to know and learn and understand more about the team and the role first before applying. And this is actually a good sign when a candidate comes to me in advance and is genu genuinely curious and wants to know more about the role before applying because it shows me that they're taking it seriously and they want to make sure that they're a right fit and that we're a right fit for them. Now, be courteous here. If you're trying to strike up a professional relationship with somebody that's already at the company, just tell them that you're really interested in learning more about the company and learning more about their team and this potential role that you saw posted. Chances are they're gonna be curious and interested to meet you. Alternatively, if you don't have a referral, your other option is the cold email. Now let's talk about this for a second because I have had some cold emails from designers who just attach their resume to the email and are interested in applying for a role. Now there are ways that this can go really well, but there are also ways that this can go really, really badly. So I want to share my experience with these cold emails and some tips so that you can avoid sending a bad cold email because I do believe there are good cold emails. Now the first tip is please spare me the life story. If your email is a whole novel about who you are and your whole life history, I am not going to be interested. There's actually a really, really great article on Mike Industries that talks a lot about how to structure your cold email. Now this article is 10 years old now, so you could claim it's kind of old, but it is gold also. It's a really, really great article that has a perfect template that you can use for writing your next cold email when you want to reach out to a company for a job. I'll link it in the description. Essentially, all you need to say in your email is who you are, what role you're interested in applying for, why you think you'd make a good fit for that role and a link to your resume or work. You could also in the email actually have a list of links. So maybe you want to link out to your LinkedIn or link out to your website or portfolio or link out to a specific case study that you want me to read. That's really helpful if you just give me a bullet point list of where I can go to find out more about you on the internet. Like I said, please make sure that you mention the role that you are interested in applying for. Too often I've had emails from people saying they want to apply and I'm like, Okay, but for which role? Because we have hundreds of roles listed at any given time at Uber. So please make sure that you list the role that you're interested in applying for. This makes it really easy for me to judge whether you're a good potential candidate. And also I know where to then direct your portfolio to so it gets to the right person. Now time for some practical tips that kind of go without saying, but too often I see people make mistakes in this area. The first is to make sure your LinkedIn is up to date. Make sure at the very least you have your current job or working position, whatever it is, maybe you're a student, listed up there at the top. This helps me know where you are right now in your career and what you're currently doing. The next is to make sure your website is working well on mobile and desktop. This is where I'm gonna go to get an impression of your work, make sure it's working and not accidentally offline like your hosting expired or something like that. 
make sure it's online and it's looking good. Where you can show passion, show that you've done the research on the company and show why you think you would make a good fit. This is gonna go really, really far in your application and make it easier for me to assess whether you're a good candidate. So to summarize this video, make sure you start doing research early on the kind of company that you wanna be working at. Start networking early and planting those little seeds to potentially have a referral into the company. Remember, you do not need to meet 100% of the job criteria in order to apply for the job. A lot of the time, companies are equally looking for potential and willingness to learn rather than just checking off all the boxes on the job description list. Also, a little secret, sometimes those job descriptions are not written by designers and written by people in HR or recruiting. So it's not always a true reflection of what the role actually entails. Lastly, show passion and enthusiasm wherever possible and make sure the company understands why you're a good fit. In the next video, we're gonna to touch on interview day. So yes, you've prepared your application, you've applied, the company's reached out to you, invited you for an interview, they're excited about you, you're excited about them, now it's go time. Make sure you keep an eye out for the next video, we'll talk all about how to prepare for your interview. I'll catch you in that video. Bye-bye. <laughs>